Hi there, it's the end of the week and I've hardly slept. My living room's a mess and so is my hair, so I'm going to wear a hat for this. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be releasing several add-ons as well as an update for Mr. Mannequin's tools. One of those add-ons is a rigging add-on, which enables very quick and easy modular rigging of characters. It's kind of an expansion on some of the stuff I was working before, but it's now its own add-on and Mr. Mannequin's tools will work with it and have the rigging from it. And I wanted to show some of that off. So I'm going to start a timer in a moment and I'm going to show you just how fast I can rig the mannequin from pretty much nothing to having to having him animation ready and then I'll explain a bit about some of the new controls so let's start this timer in three two one let's go okay so I need to add in a mannequin first of all from the new mannequin operator let's hide that cube I always feel bad deleting the poor thing and we're going to start adding some rigging in pose mode. So the first thing I'm going to add is a spline chain for the spine. Explain more about this afterwards. Default shapes, default groups, wants a chain length of six. Okay, that's perfect. I want a spine 03 as the target though, please. And let's move on to the hand. That I don't want the IK target. So let's just hide those for a moment. So then we're going to want to do the arms, so I'll add in an opposable chain with default shapes, default groups, it can have a floor target as well. And it's positive to be negative X on the left. We've got a head hold twist bone, so let's add that in. So it holds the deformation back at the head of the bone. It does want an offset for acrobatic animations. And its target is going to be the upper arm. Watch this menu close on me. These things keep closing on me at the worst possible moments. God, I didn't. Thank goodness for that. It's ruined the past like six attempts that I've tried to do this. Those stupid drop drop downs or pop ups, whatever you want to call them, where you select the bone names. Uh, next twist bone. There's tail follow. So it follows a bone and causes the, causes the deformation to follow a bone. That's going to be the hand in this situation. There we go. And I used to use offsets on these. They don't really need them though. So I'm sort of not going to do that now. And then we can do the other arm. Again, it's opposable. This time X is the right axis for it. And it's kind of a floor target as well. And that's that. Then we can add the twist bones in. Same as before. Head hold on the upper arm. Please don't close on me, you annoying little menu. Upper arm R this time, and then the lower arm twist, same again, tail follow, default shapes, default groups, doesn't need an offset. That's to the hand R. Cool, awesome. Arms rigged, right, feet, that's the IK bone, not the actual foot, right. Add a bit of rigging. This is going to be. Plan to grade, so a nice leg chain with the controls that everybody knows and loves. Pivot for it is, well it's going to use a floor, and it's pivot is the ball of the foot. CB ball, look, see, menu closed, I knew it happened to me. Hate it. Actually the balls are there. The balls are already here, the balls are in the building. But they don't want to let me click on them. The menu keeps wanting to damn well close on me. And this is negative X, just like the arm. Then we can add in the thigh twist. It's a head hold. All the menus are going to start closing on me now, and it's going to wind me up. It's targeting the thigh itself, thigh L. Then the calf twist, tail follow, much like the arms. That's how it goes. It's targeting the foot. And then we've got the other leg to do. That looks right, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, so we've got the other leg. That is the IK bone. And then we're going to add in another plantar grade chain. Default shapes, default groups. Pivot is the ball. She's probably going to close on me again now, but the right one, I didn't close. Amazing. Thank you. 
use a floor target, please. And then we could do the I twist again, head hold. Pretty much copy paste it, really, isn't it? Just doing the same thing over and over. But it's much quicker than doing it by hand over and over again. This is targeting the eye, but the right one this time. And then the half twist, tail follow, default shapes, default groups, doesn't need an offset to the foot, CB, foot R. There we go. Awesome, that's him mostly rigged. Now we just need to do the fingers because fingers are annoying to animate on a good day, let alone in entirely in FK. So let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And we're going to add in scalar chains for these. So they're scaly. I'll show how they work in a moment, although I think most people probably know about this rigging if they've used Mr. Mannequin's tools already. Default shapes, default groups, user floor. And I would usually set the floor root to be the hands floor bone if it had one, but I'm just not going to right now because it isn't actually necessary. It can be done as an afterthought. So that's that. So we're going to add in another scale chain. Doing these fingers is actually pretty tedious. Right, most of it's pretty tedious, but the fingers are extra tedious. So I'm probably going to try and automate this. I plan on doing some proper fully fledged hand rigging in the future. But for now, this is what it is. It does what it needs to do. It's usable. It's not perfect, but it's usable. So pretty much just have to tick three check boxes on each finger, just adding it in. Scale a chain, tick and tick and tick. And then we can go to the other hand and add in five more scalar chains. So now this is what I mean, it's tedious, just doing the same thing on each finger. I really want to make this a bit more automated so like you can select all the fingertips and it'll do them all at once. It'll just be a lot less hassle. I don't use default layers. I haven't finished setting those up just yet. I mean, most people really don't even need layers. I've got a bunch of hiding functionality, like hide buttons that I haven't set up yet. I disconnected them while I was working on the more technical, like how the rigging actually works, you know. And that's going to default shapes, default groups, use floor. Last two fingers, last two fingers. Stop my timer. What are we doing? Adding loads of damn finger chains. Final finger. Mm, default shape, default groups, and use floor. And that's him done. Stop the timer. How long did that take? Seven and a half minutes. That's not bad for what would take most people a good hour to two hours to rig. All of these, all of these constraints, all of the creating all the bones in the right place and constraining it. And this add-on just did it for me in a fraction of the time. I knew it was going to be quick. I didn't know it was going to be this quick. Last time I did this, it took me 15 minutes. And I was like, that's pretty damn good. Because it would take me like a good like hour and a half to two hours to rig this by hand manually. So that's about it. This is pretty much what you'll be animating with in Mr. Mannequin's 1.4. He's the two add-ons, Mr. Mannequin's and this rigging add-on, they work together and I'll do a separate videos describing this rigging add-on in more detail. But I do just want to quickly go over a couple of new things and show them off because they're really cool. So obviously we've got all new bone shapes everywhere. If you don't like them, if enough people complain about these bone shapes, I'll put in an option to have the old ones back, but I much prefer these. They're much simpler. They look a lot nicer and most of them stick out of the mesh as you need them to. Like these bones are designed to fit on any armature and any bone orientation. So you can kind of do what you want with them and make them fit outside your character or outside your character mesh, however you need to. They all scale quite well. So, yeah, new bones. Now then, let's have a look at this spline control system on the back here. This is probably something quite a few people will never have seen before. 
So this spline rigging, I owe credit to Dicko for. I think his Twitter handle is at Dicko Art. I know that he has a YouTube channel that is significantly more successful than mine, but he's a very good blender rigger. I highly recommend watching his videos. And he's just he's just fun to watch. He's not he's not too boring. He's not doesn't leave out too many details, you know. And all of his rigging works, which is surprising for most YouTube videos. Most blender rigging YouTube videos are pretty terrible. There's only a few people who I think they know who they are who are actually quite good at doing them. So, and and Dicko is one of the few. So we've got this truly sublime spine system from him. Now I have used spline systems before on tentacles and tails, but I never actually thought to use them on a human spine. And he sent me a sample file, which was a little bit different to this. I've kind of done it. I've taken what he was doing and done my own thing with it. So there's a couple of different ways to use this. Let's quickly highlight that. Let's go over the controls. We've got a main pelvis control that's sort of just like your normal pelvis bone type functions. Then we've got the various targets. We've got a target at the bottom for the pelvis so he can shake his money maker without influencing the head too much. This is really handy for first person animations when you've got a camera stuck to his face. You can control the head bob with the up and down and you can move it side to side and have very little impact on how the head moves. It's a very natural movement. And then let's show off the stretching as well. because so we've got two, these pink and purple bones here do serve a purpose, although they don't need to be visible. I'm having them visible for this so that I can show what they're doing quickly. So what we've got here is the purple bones fitting the curve. They're scaling themselves to fit along this curve at all times and the pink bones just fit along as far as they can without scaling. So what I've done is I've added in a control for this so you can blend between either. So you either at one we're following the purple bones and at zero we're following the pink bones. I figured like there's a couple different situations where you'd use either end of this. There's also situations where you'd even key between them to get balance. So this is a great way. It's a great little control. It's good fun. It's a good thing. And that's what I wanted to show about the spline quickly. I'm trying to be as quick as I can because this next bit is the long bit. IK versus FK. Not just IK versus FK. But per chain. Automatic. IK versus FK. Okay, this isn't just standard FK snapping either. I'm doing it the other way too. Not only are we set, am I setting FK to what the to the generated IK chain, but I'm also forcing the IK chain to fit the FK to fit the forward kinematics as well when switching back, which is something that a lot of people struggle with. But I think I might well have found the key to this. It does have some minor issues, but for the minor issues, I already have solutions, so it's not too much of a problem. Let's quickly show off how sublime the auto switch is. I think that's my new, this is this is the sublime update. All the rigging in this is just, it's getting to a point now where it's just so good to use. So let's show off this beautiful IK, automatic IK versus FK. So we're hold, holding the target, we're in IK. We're holding the pole target, we're still in IK. And then we just simply grab one of the FK bones and oh look at that now we're in FK and the targets are following and then we're back in IK again yeah you, I think you get the idea what, of what's going on here I'm, I'm checking the bone selection and I'm using my fancy pants IK versus FK method to switch depending on what we have selected so we can be in FK and then we can be straight away back in IK and you can set the frequency for this check <clears throat> in case people on weaker computers than mine struggle with it, but I can set this right down to check every quarter of a second on, I think, about 20 chains before I notice any impact on performance. So, like, yeah, it's not necessarily super performance-friendly. Like, I wouldn't fancy having a 1,000 IK chains in a scene all using automatic switching at the same time. So once you've done your animations, make sure you turn it off. But... Otherwise, yeah, it's it's a good system. I quite like it. I'm going to work on some automatic keyframing for the IK chains as well. But the issue I mentioned a moment ago, if we switch to FK and we make some really silly rotation with the arm that the IK chain would never generate, 
we can still force that. We're now back in IK again. We can still force that on the IK chain if you use the right methods. And now we're back in IK and we are using the IK and it is functioning as intended. Unfortunately, we have a whole bunch of transforms on the IK chain itself from the FK. So we have an influence value here that we can use to sort of switch that back off again. So we can reclaim our IK chain from the FK, like so. Isn't that lovely? So obviously, clearly that doesn't look quite right. Looks like the pole target's at the wrong pole angle or something else is going on completely, but we can bring it back. And this, of course, can be keyframed in conjunction with keyframing the IK and FK on and off. So instead of blending between two chains, having to manage two chains like most people do to blend between IK and FK, I've got it all on one chain and everything and the influence of the FK, if it even becomes a problem, because this isn't really a problem on sort of, it's not too much of a problem unless you do strange things in FK, but it does need to be here in case you do decide to try and put his hand inside his shoulder without moving his shoulder, then you do need this control to get the IK back. So that is just about everything I needed to talk about. I hope you found this video insightful and I need to say a massive thank you to all my patrons, especially those that have stuck with me over the past several months. Lord knows it's been a long time since I've produced any content because I've been so busy working on this as well as just, I've, I've just been too busy with my daughter being off school from global pandemics and things like that. So I haven't had to do anything and it really means a lot to me that the people that have stuck around have stuck around. That really means a lot to me and I'm very pleased to have you as associates and as supporters. So I hope anybody that watches this have a great day and I hope you stay well, stay healthy and so does all of your family. Goodbye.